Do you remember The Velveteen Rabbit, the children's book about a stuffed bunny who was loved so much by a child that he actually became a real rabbit? I, I love this story for a number of reasons, particularly because the idea of something like this ever happening, well, it pulls my heartstrings pretty deep, but also because it reminds me of a few things I've learned from the teachings of the late Thich Nhat Hanh on growth and suffering. There's one particular part of the story in The Velveteen Rabbit that I'd love to share with you. The bunny is talking to a toy horse, right? So here, sit with me. Close your eyes. Now, if you haven't read the book, it's really fascinating, and I'm sorry that you missed it. Um, but if your eyes are closed, I want you to imagine this story, okay? Because it's I'm going to actually read from the book. The bunny is talking to a toy horse, right? So you got that image in your head. And the horse offers him some wisdom that speaks to what we'll be talking about today. Here we go. The skin horse begins first. Real isn't how you are made, the skin horse says. It's a thing that happens to you. Hmm. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Hmm. Does it happen all at once? I mean, like being wound up or bit by bit? Oh, no, it doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become... It takes a long time. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things, uh, these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Ugh, so good. You can open your eyes now if you'd like. Becoming real, or becoming who you are, requires the endurance of the everyday, of painful life circumstances. Sometimes these mm, speed bumps can make the road ahead of us feel never-ending, especially since suffering, well, it isn't always some big traumatic event. Suffering can be social anxiety, and everyday stress, and, and worry. But today I want to show you how embracing our suffering is part of how we become real or how we live our truest selves. Like the skin horse said, becoming real doesn't happen all at once and sometimes it hurts. But there is a way to endure suffering with a grateful heart. I know it seems backwards. It'll make you a stronger person with greater awareness of the suffering of others. I'd also like to honor the recent loss of Thich Nhat Hanh. He was the Vietnamese monk, uh, activist, and poet with a massive influence on my personal mindfulness journey, not to mention millions of others. And I think some of his teachings align, uh, interestingly enough, with the message of the Velveteen Rabbit. But that's sometimes how life works, just finding life's lessons in the eyes of a child. Today I'd like to embrace Nakan's teachings as we learn to endure our challenges with gratitude and strength. We can all learn something from the skin horse and the famous monk. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. In a single day, you probably accomplish more than you think. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you eat breakfast, you go to work, you text your friends, you stop to run errands, you watch TV, you get ready for bed and sleep. I mean, in, in 24 hours, you've got a lot to do. Do you ever find yourself thinking, if I just get this project at work done? as fast as possible. I can go home, I can take off my shoes, put on my pajamas, and relax. And then suddenly, you're speeding through your work to get it over with. 
Dick Narkhan has something to say about this in his book, The Heart of Buddha's Teaching. And I quote, If we think we have 24 hours to achieve a certain purpose, today will become a means to attain an end. We do not need to wait for these chores to be done to be happy. We have everything we need to make the present moment the happiest in our life. Even if we have a cold or a headache, we don't have to wait until we get over our cold to be happy. Having a cold is a part of life. End of quote. Mindfulness or the awareness and acceptance of each present moment is always the first step, no matter the challenge you face. I'm going to say that one more time because it's so important and I don't want you to miss this. Mindfulness or the awareness and the acceptance of each present moment is always the first step, no matter the challenge you face. It's your strongest tool and a skill that you can cultivate to learn how to show up for any moment in your life, whether it's a boring shift or your birthday party. Mindfulness means embracing the present moment. And I'm going to talk about this in a few episodes from now, but we'll get to that point later. Embracing that the present moment might not feel great. Did you hear that? And then embracing that the moments that don't feel great, accepting the fact that they are a part of life. And then accepting that these not so great parts of life are stepping stones to becoming real. Oh, think about that. Accepting that these not so great parts of life are stepping stones to becoming real. It's a daunting thought, though. I mean, who wants to be fully present while they suffer? I mean, wouldn't it be better to just distract ourselves, to tune it out and pretend it doesn't exist? But I like to think of the dirty, torn up velveteen rabbit, right? Let's go back to him really quick. He was loved so much and got so raggedy with age that he barely looked like a bunny after a few years. But that's when something magical happened and he became a real rabbit. Think about that. You'll also be worn out sometimes. You'll have to be through a lot of things by the time you're old. But if you allow yourself to truly experience each and every moment, you might find that you're suffering lessons and lessons. Not because life has gotten easier, but because you've gotten stronger and more capable of handling whatever comes your way. When you're real, you don't mind being hurt. Real life tip. Imagine washing dishes. I know, everybody's favorite pastime. But just for a moment, just think about washing dishes. This is where we're going to practice, oddly enough, mindfulness more and more. I know, it's an odd thing, but just stick with me. Imagine being so engaged with washing dishes. Thoughts come and go, but you gently put your mind back on course as you focus washing that plate, washing that cup. This presence is how you experience life. What about the people around you, you ask? What happens when their worry or stress needs our support? Thich Nhat Hanh writes, our happiness and suffering are the happiness and suffering of others. And he's right. I mean, none of us exist in a vacuum. Embracing your own challenges means that you're mindful of the challenges of others. Think about that. When you accept, when you embrace your own challenges, that means you're becoming aware of what some others are going through. We all know what it's like when a loved one is hurting. Seeing a friend or a family member suffering can cause you to react emotionally and physically. Your heart sinks or there's a pit in your stomach. And those phrases exist for a reason. Nobody becomes real on their own. 
It's probably true that many people have helped you learn to embrace challenges and accept difficult times. While you were struggling and growing and becoming more capable, so were the people around you as they watched you succeed. Living mindfully and embracing suffering also means extending compassion to others. Ugh, and my goodness, what a time right now do we need that. The Velveteen Rabbit became worn out and shabby because he was loved and played with by the young boy. Yes, even love wears us out. Think about that. Even love wears us out. When we give ourselves to others by choosing to love them, offering a listening ear or being there for them, we can end up looking a lot like the Velveteen Rabbit, ending up threadbare and tired is a risk we all take when we love another person. But when you're strong and mindful, you can't help but love others. You can't help but be compassionate. And Mindfulness is inclusive and it means loving. And our true presence is the greatest gift we can give someone else. Think about that. Like what is like the greatest thing that you can give someone else? Time love, attention, being present for that person, even if it's just sitting there and just listening, just being quiet. That's one of the greatest things we can ever offer. One of my favorite quotes of Thich Nhat Hanh is, with understanding and compassion, you will be able to heal the wounds in your heart and the wounds in the world. I actually quoted this in an episode the week before he passed, oddly enough. So I'm going to say it again, though. With understanding and compassion, you will be able to heal the wounds in your heart and the wounds in the world. I think that may be because our wounds at their core, they aren't all that different. If we understand our own pain we can understand someone else's. Hardship might make us stronger, but what can we learn from joy? And sometimes after you've been through something challenging, you might feel fear or worry when you experience happiness. Thoughts like, oh, this is so good. What if this ends badly? Or do I deserve this even? Those thoughts can creep in. Worry is how you suffer, even when you're happy. Did you hear that? Worry is how you suffer, even when you're happy. But your strength doesn't come from fighting the changed circumstances that can be altered. It comes from accepting those circumstances and being truly present so that you can experience things as they are instead of worrying about what they may or may not be in the future. Oh, there's so much there. Your strength. Ready? Are you listening? Your strength doesn't come from fighting to change whatever it is you're going through. Your strength comes from accepting those circumstances so that you can actually experience things as they are instead of worrying about what they may be, right? Becoming real or becoming your truest self, it's this, I know this is so cliche, it's this journey, learning mindfulness, acceptance, and compassion. It's all part of this path, this journey, this you waking up every day. And along this route, there are so many things you cannot predict. Things like loss, and grief, and success, and love. All of these things can happen at any time. Who knows? But the beauty is, you don't need to know. Oof. Think about that. You don't. You don't need to know. You don't need to worry when you're present. I have chills right now. You don't need to worry when you are in the present. All you need to be is here, right now, and look clearly what's in front of you. 
Not tomorrow, not next week, right in front of you. You know, perhaps during really difficult struggles, we should treat ourselves like the rabbit in the story. Instead of breaking ourselves down for all of our faults and shortcomings, we should focus on becoming real, to love ourselves unconditionally, to accept the uncontrollable, and embrace ourselves with forgiveness, all the forgiveness that our arms can wrap around ourselves. These are steps. These are the process of becoming real. And when you find what real is, you will never feel a feeling so free, so warm, so alive. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.